Hey, what's up guys? Eric Vasquez here with a brand new Design Basics video for you today from designcuts.com. Now in this video we're going to be talking all about contrast. And the simplest and most basic way to think about contrast is to think about two opposing things. So we're talking about light versus dark, big versus tall, that sort of thing. Bright versus light, you get the idea. So in this video I want to demonstrate for you guys a few different ways that you can use contrast in your work. Whether you're working with photography, uh, layouts, print design, just about anything. You can find ways to incorporate contrast into your work to really make it stand out. So let's head over to Photoshop and get started. Now over here in Photoshop I've just got a basic text layer on a dark background. So I want to start off just by demonstrating in its most simple form how this works. Now if I change this background color to the same color as the text, you really can't see it at all. But as soon as I start to make it just a little bit darker, and the darker we get, the more contrast we're adding because of the colors. Okay, so if I went with solid white for the background color, and now for the type itself, if I also made it white, obviously you can't see it. But as we start to get a little bit darker and darker until we go with complete black, that is a very high contrast look. Okay, so it's really about the elements and how they interact and respond to one another in the layout. So again, let me come back here and maybe just change the background color. This is still pretty high contrast because we're dealing with a color that is bright, but also the text, which is very dark. All right, so if I were to take the text now and maybe make it just a slightly lighter color, you can read it, but it's a very low contrast design. So in this way, you can use contrast if you didn't want the text to stand out that much, but if you really want to draw attention to it, you have to think about using a light and bright foreground color, or in this case text color, over a darker background color. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in another example here, and I'm going to use this image of this dog. And I just downloaded this from Unsplash, and you can see that it's a pretty um, pretty simple looking stock photo. It's kind of interesting the way that it's, it's cropped. But with this dog on the background, it actually has a pretty good amount of contrast in it. And you can see that you know, it's just got this light pink background, so the black and the white really pops off of the background here. But if I went in and maybe replaced this background with a yellow background, you know, that still works. So let's just go ahead and put a black and white adjustment layer here, just on top of the dog, because I want to get rid of some of that pink lighting around the edges. Okay, and now if I go ahead and put a solid color on top, you can see that we're now just focused on the shape of the dog. And much like when we were using text in the example before, you can see how having a very dark image in the foreground on top of a very light and bright background creates high contrast. So in this example, it's really effective and it's really working well. However, if I were to go ahead and change that up, okay, now the dog completely disappears. But just like when we were working with text before, you can see that by going darker here, we now have a higher contrast image. Okay, and as I experiment and move this around, you can see how that's affecting, you know, how much that image really stands out. So let's just go ahead and maybe put that on multiply, all right, just to give it a nice kind of cast color over the whole image. And now if I went into my background layer again and change the background color, I can make it, you know, a darker color like that, or go completely white. Again, you see that we have a lot of contrast here. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. And now if I bring the text back in, we now have three elements. And obviously, the white is going to stand out the most because it is the brightest visual in our layout. All right, so let's just go ahead and make this a little bit smaller here. And this typeface, by the way, is called Martabuck. It's from the Design Cuts Marketplace. It's a really beautiful and nice looking typeface. So definitely want to check that out if you guys are looking for some nice scripty fonts. And, you know, I should just mention for a second too that you know, contrast, as I mentioned at the top of the tutorial, um, it doesn't just apply to, you know, color and objects. You can also have contrasting sizes or weights of your typefaces. So in this example, I'm just going to show you guys how that works when you're using text in your layouts. So here we have the same typeface, but if I were to make it, you know, a lot smaller, well, we have contrast there between the two sizes. And of course, if I were to change the color, you can make it stand out a little bit less because in this case 
this would sort of be you know our, our tagline or our secondary text. Now if this was larger, closer to the size of the white text, and I make the white text smaller, you can see how that kind of turns it on its head a little bit. The white actually still stands out a little bit more in my opinion. All right, so if I increase that, maybe lower the transparency a little bit. Now let's bring this dog back in just to add a few more elements. You can see that we're starting to get some nice and interesting looks here. All right, so if I do something like this. All right, and we can also go ahead and maybe change the color on the dog just to see what some other examples here could look like. And it starts to get pretty interesting as you play around with this. I think that's looking pretty cool. And you can just see just turning on and off some of these different layers, how that can work. So it's a pretty nice way to think about contrast. Now again, in a very simple way, I just want to explain to you guys in its most simple form how this works, right? So if we have this really big rectangle here next to, let's say, a really small or thin rectangle, we're creating some tension here, and this is the, the interesting thing about contrast and how you can really use it to your advantage. All right, so in, in this example, it's kind of based on scale, whereas before I was talking about the text, right? So the difference in size is still scale, but we're also using color now. So contrast can apply to scale, it can apply to color, it can apply to these kinds of photos whenever you're you know, working with these elements. All right, so for example, if I had made this dog really small, okay, and then I can duplicate it, maybe flip him the other way. Now, just like the example with the rectangles, we're using scale here to create contrast. And that's kind of a cool look right there. It's the same image of the dog, obviously, but it starts to create an interesting looking layout. And we're still using contrast here. We have high contrast between the dog and the background and we have high contrast between our white type and our dark yellow type and the background. So as we start to add more elements here to our design, you can see how quickly you know, we can begin to add things, but still keeping contrast in mind. You know, it shouldn't be the driving factor when you are working on a layout. You don't want to you know, always create something knowing that you're just going to create contrast unless you're really trying to you know, get that point across but it should be used as a tool, as a technique and a device that can help you guys to make your work look visually pleasing. All right, so let me just give you one or two more quick examples of how this works just to really, you know, hammer it home and hit the nail on the head for you guys. So here we have another stock image, just a, another free photo from Unsplash. And I've gone ahead and silhouetted this guy from the background here. It's not, you know, super clean or anything, but I just wanted to uh, give you guys one more example kind of similar to what we were doing before. Okay, so here if I make the background color the same color as say some of the shadows here from the photo you can see that the the red light on this guy's face is really starting to pop out and if I go ahead and add say a curves or a levels adjustment on top of this whole image it'll help us create even more contrast. As I begin to make this darker I can pull out some of the highlight areas to really try and make it pop. Okay, so here I've made it darker. I'll go ahead and add a levels adjustment and then just brighten those lights a little bit. Make the darks a little bit darker there. And now you can see that we have a really high contrast image, right? Where this is working, there's still a lot of contrast there, but we're pushing it even further. And again, if I come in and maybe add a bit of text here. That's obviously very high contrast because it's bright white type on a dark background. But as soon as I begin to change the color here, it starts to tie it all together. So we're using contrast as a device, but we're doing it in a way that is smart and that makes sense and still fits within our design. Okay, so even if I have something like this, and let's say I wanted to add some more text to it here if we were doing you know, a layout or a brochure or a flyer or anything like that. I can just paste in some dummy text for now. And I'll just go ahead and change it to a very simple and clean looking typeface. Something like that. You make it about 12 point. You make it about uh, 18 point here. Let's go even bigger because this is a pretty big image. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and take a look at that. 
Now, obviously, you can't see it because there's a lot of contrast here between you know, the headline and this body text as far as the scale and the size of it. But if I go ahead and blow that up even more, and then maybe make this red, you can see that we now have a lot more contrast here. So let me bring that in front, maybe move it down here. And just to you know, make this look a little bit nicer for you guys, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I just wanted to try and create sort of a quick visual layout here, a nice example, uh, just to demonstrate another way that this can come in handy whenever you're designing. So here we have you know, our secondary text down here on the bottom. But let's just go ahead and switch these colors around because the red is standing out a little bit too much. So if I go ahead and use that kind of lighter blue color there, and then for my background text, I go ahead and make it lighter or even red. Okay, now I can come in front of the image here, and I'll just add a little bit of gradient on the bottom just to kind of make it fade out so that, you know, now we have more contrast between the background behind the text and that body text right there. Okay, so just kind of centering those two things and playing around with it a little bit, you guys can see how quickly you can use contrast in your design basically to determine or tell the viewer where you want them to look. Right, in this example, I want them to read that big cursive headline first and then see this guy's face right here and then see the text on the bottom. So contrast is just one of many devices that you guys can use in your design work and it allows you to have a little bit more control over the design. So depending on what you want to accomplish or what you want somebody to read or see first in your work, you can use contrast to make that happen. So I hope that these examples have helped to clear some of this up for you guys and to give you a really kind of, you know, very basic and, you know, easy to understand explanation as to not only what contrast is, but a few different ways that you can use it and how you can work within a program like Photoshop to, you know, have a lot more control over the contrast in your work. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please go ahead and smash that like button. Give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the Design Cuts YouTube channel. As always, we would love to hear your thoughts and feedback and suggestions, so be sure to leave those comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Eric Vasquez here with Design Basics for Design Cuts, and we'll see you next time.